It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. <laughs> I mean, for me, it works when I use my cell phone, so I don't have any problem with it. But um, how are you? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, it's just, it's very, very strange that for some reason, like, I'm looking around at the uh, at the settings of this tor- this sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, like, there's, there's, it, it's bizarre to me that it would just have no options for for like the computer to actually you know record stuff it's very very bizarre to me very bizarre yeah more or less to record stuff you have to use your cell phone to uh add the twitter space and that's how it works at least on his this application gotcha yeah yeah yeah. well i mean you know if it's convenient that's uh that's fair yeah so um how your channel's been doing lately uh i'm fine i suppose i don't know i uh i don't really I don't really pay that much attention to it, to be honest, man. I don't really play the YouTube game anymore. Really? So you've just been doing Twitch as of lately? No, I mean, I do YouTube. I just don't. I do YouTube only when I, like, like things that I actually want to do rather than, like, play the game, you know? The game uh, the game was pretty much one of the worst things that ever happened in my life. Uh, and, I, you know, I only really make videos when I want to and about stuff that I uh, that I actually give a shit about. You still make the videos about the pseudoscience stuff? Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the only stuff I'll do on my main channel. I've got a second channel where I just kind of like rant about other shit. You know, I rant about the grifty grifty aspect of YouTube. I uh, I'll rant about politics a little bit here and there, but uh, and then I've got like a third channel where I do like every now and then some Trek stuff. And uh, we've been me and my buddy have been doing this uh, stream every two weeks where we watch a ridiculous soap opera and get totally wasted. And it's, it's really fun. I think I've seen your face somewhere on the drunken peasants at some point. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like real life buddies with Ben and Billy. So I go on there every now and then. Hmm. Yeah. For me, it's like the same thing. I just been, I guess not uploading as much videos on my channel, but uh, more or less, I've just been participating in these sort of Twitter spaces because honestly, talking to people is easier to use Twitter nowadays than just to do the streaming stuff because it's like the technicalities behind everything. Sure, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Yeah, it's uh, it, it really just comes down to like, I guess doing what you want to do rather than necessarily like having to jump into playing like, because like like you and I both know we've been we've been at doing like YouTube and content creation for a really long time. Uh, there's doing what you want to do, and then there's doing what you can do to like bolster your public image, to like manufacture growth, like get fucking paid, et cetera, et cetera. And like you know, no no hate on that as long as it's honest. Like I don't give a shit if if people want to fucking hustle. But uh, most people, I don't think these days are very honest about it. Yeah, I guess more or less, like when it comes down to growing your channel, I guess it's much harder now in comparison to, you know, in the past. Because in the past, it feels as though that with the content creation, you could do whatever you want to. Don't really have to worry about the rules. But then with the new guidelines that YouTube has, it's like very strict. And so it's like, it's kind of make me lose some sort of motivation to just make some sort of videos nowadays. I wouldn't even necessarily, I mean, that's part of it, I suppose. Uh, the, I, I suppose that's kind of part of it, but I, I'd also say like, there's a lot of big changes that have happened with YouTube. I mean, after the apocalypse, like the apocalypse never got fixed. I mean, it bounced back. It bounced back maybe like 10 to 20%. So people who could make a pretty decent living on like a 20, even like a 15,000 subscriber channel uh, now make, you know, maybe if they're lucky, 150 to 200 bucks a month, maybe, maybe, you know, 
Uh, so that that's kind of like that's 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 kind of one of the things I think that also complicates it too is that uh, it doesn't facilitate people of smaller stature or of more niche content being able to make it something more more than just like a casual hobby, and it, it encourages people to try and uh, and drum up controversy uh, to go absolutely fucking banana balls, you know. That's just kind of like the nature of the game, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, for this whole entire, I guess you can, I won't even call it debate, just a conversation, because more or less, and I guess my personal grievance is that I'm actually kind of worried. Mm-hmm. Mostly because in the past, in the past, I seen like a lot of people who used to be like, you know, I guess you can say friends or allies, whatever you want to call them gotten to this point where more or less they went to a really dark path. When I talked to this person named what was this person, like the skeptic feminist, whatever, there was like news of him being a murderer and of course he went to jail because of what he did to his partner. Yeah. And then for like, you know, uh Edgy Spinks, it turns out he was like an alt writer and he was trying to, you know, manipulate and indoctrinate the people with his content. Then, of course, infamous Amos Yee, who turned out to be a pedophile and also went to jail. Turned I, out. He was always a pedophile. Yeah. 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 He, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, too. It's one of those things where, like, you know, if you give, if somebody's, like, actually got some dark shit inside of them, give them enough fucking rope and they're going to fucking hang themselves. So I, I really wasn't too terribly surprised when it came out that Amos was not all just memes, you know? Like, <laughs> it was obviously a lot more than memes. Like, if he was willing to like put himself out there in like the public eye, like advocating for this shit, like he had to believe in it to some extent. Like, there's no way. Like, I there's no way I saw him not being like a pedophile. Okay. Right. Okay. So wrong has his hands up. So wrong. Go ahead. Yeah. So are we still discussing the whole Antifa is a force of good? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right, right now, I'm just trying to warm up, you know, to you know, get some memories from me and Jeff because me and Jeff have some sort of history in the past to just catch up on things first before I talk about this. Okay. Oh, I know, Jeff. Should I take my? Should I get? Should I say my like take or do I wait? I uh, just waited like five more minutes and then I guess we could talk about the main subject. Sure. Uh, also, yeah. I, uh, yeah, most easy. like yeah, I agree with Aiden. Like. Like my my do like advocating for like openly advocate for this. So I'm I'm yeah generally I, for for few people are not generally surprised that uh yeah there was like CP on this like computer. So I'm, I'm just like yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not surprised either because like I remember his video on his YouTube channel. I was like no way this guy could be serious, but he kept repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. I was like yeah he's serious. This guy's serious. <laughs> yeah. Spooky shit, man. Spooky, spooky shit. But anyway, the, my main point is that every single time I try to associate or be friends with people, more or less they turn into like really, really extreme sort of people. And this is where you come in, Jeff, because when I saw your pictures in 2020, I, I'm not sure where it was, but maybe like Portland, whatever, I kind of grew some sort of concern because what was happening. Because more or less, I noticed that you became more and more affiliated with Antifa. Uh, more or less. Uh, wait, wait. You, someone's going to talk? Well, okay. So <clears throat> we got to clarify something. This is very important. I am not affiliated with Antifa. I am the leader of Antifa. True. Like you, yeah, I mean, my official title is uh, based comrade, uh, leader of the the Dick Girl Chainmail Bikini Brigade. His Imperial Majesty Jeff Holiday, aka Daddy. Wait, can, can I can I say something really quick? Yeah. When a lot of people bring up uh, quote unquote Antifa, nobody's really establishing what that means. Um, if we take, for example, like the Unite the Right rally, where all those people showed up and like beat the shit out of the protesters as they should. Um, and people were like, oh, this is, this is, uh, Antifa. 
that Antifa is not an actual organization. It was a mix of organizations. There were like uh, anarcho syndicalist organizations that showed up there. Um, some were just like regular college students that didn't like fucking Nazis in their town. Um, so it's not like Antifa isn't a thing. It's like a collective of things fighting for all for the same cause, which is, you know, abolishing fascism um, and fighting back against fascism. Um, so, I mean, you have to, I feel like you need to be a bit more specific than just saying Antifa. Well, more or less when I think of Antifa, and I think it's the same thing for most people, is the people with the black block, like the black block kind of tactics where they put on the mask and also like the flags that they have on, I guess that has like the anarchist symbol or whatever. And so when I think about Antifa, I'm referring to that specific type. Gotcha. Well, okay. So uh, just to, to, to kind of give like a, a broad, a broad like kind of analogy, because Aiden, Aiden is, is, is pretty much spot on. There are, there are some very specific groups that identify as like Antifa groups, like for instance, Rose City Antifa. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with any group of like Antifa. Never have been. Uh, like, and the thing is, too. Prior to you know 2019 or whatnot, I had some uh, some very serious concerns about Antifa. The reason I changed my mind on it quite a bit is because I I went to Portland. You know, I went and I checked out what was going on in Portland. And I talked to people and shit, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And so, like, then you look at, like, Andy No's fucking reporting. Andy No will say uh, a march of 5,000 militant Antifa are storming Portland to burn the city to the ground! <laughs> and what actually is happening is there's, like, 12 to 15 dickheads in Black Block that are fucking rumbling and causing a big fucking stink and then you got like thousands of people running around, dancing in the streets, fucking playing music and like giving out free burritos and shit to homeless people. But those are like the dangerous Antifa. So uh, well, <laughs> you know, and that's just that that's like that's the main that's my main uh my main argument to it is that how it's portrayed is is dependent on how it's going to serve the narrative of whatever news is covering it right also Uh, if they are if even if they are violent right and i know like even if they are violent look at what look at what they have to like fight back against like you're literally the people like for example at the unite the right rally which i'll I'll bring up again the opposing side that they were fighting back against were literal neo-nazis people advocating for thousands to be killed solely because of um their ethnicity i feel like at that point like if somebody if a bunch of groups and organizations are violent uh in response to that i don't feel like that's inherently a bad thing okay let me respond to your comment about like punching the people who were at the unite the right rally first and foremost i want to say like obviously i'm against those kind of people any sort of extremists are bad to me and so when they march, of course, on like Virginia, of course, it was like their own personal right to march. But unfortunately, what happened to that woman who was killed by that car is unfortunate. It should never happen. None of that sort of stuff should never happen. At the same time, I don't think just because there's like, you know, far, far right extremists as some sort of place does not give you the right to punch them just because they have extreme view. May I respond? Sure. Um, so, uh, before you, or I'm going to make a comparison really quick or a historical example. When, uh, when like the fascists took control of Germany in the 1940s, for example, it wasn't like Hitler, like immediately started with some like great influence. Hitler started as like a protester in a group of fascist protesters that would march down the street calling for like genocide against Jews. He slowly worked his way up, eventually getting elected. Or he first tried to form a rebellion. He went to prison, and then. Wait, can you still hear me? Uh, um, you, you, no, Hello? you cut that out. You, okay, it's much oh, better. Can you hear me now? It's much better. Yes. Um. So Hitler initially, like, uh, was part of a group of protesters that uh, advocated for this and eventually elected through democratic means and that's when he you know hold on that's again, when man. He... yeah sorry someone keeps like calling me Hello? that's when he eventually uh became the 
uh, the leader of Germany and, and the Holocaust and everything happened. But with fascists, like they're not people that you can negotiate with and ask them nicely to stop. Like Hitler, like the, the reason fascists have come to. What? No, 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 no. Remove. Remove. No. Sorry. I am not going to have that guy here. Go on. Um, <laughs> like fascists that have our historic like negotiating with them and talking to these people it never works their whole ideology literally like believes in like the killing of people that don't look like them and i feel like uh any like civilized society violence is a completely reasonable response to people that are advocating for the deaths of thousands based on their ethnic background so i don't really care if antifa beats the shit out of some nazis um you know, it's uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll take a little bit less of a, a a little bit less of a position on that. I mean, the the main thing that I I think is very important is we can't illegalize being an asshole. You know, I I and you know, look, there's no bigger asshole than fucking neo Nazis. They're pieces of shit. But uh, at the same time, you know, you have you have to at least allow them the the ability to be citizens as much as anybody else. But the, the main problem that we have right now is we also have an apparatus, a, a, a fucking propaganda news media apparatus that has been in effect for a really long time. And the sole purpose of that is to discount and, and dissuade people from considering that these people even are what they are. And so it's watered down this very, very clear line of concern. Like, there should be a point where we're actually fucking really concerned. Like, wait, 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 wait. There were actual people running around with fucking, you know, swastika flags and shit. That's bad. But because the the way in which it's tooled, the way in which it's twisted, uh, especially by fucking YouTubers these days, uh, you know, we as a, as a society are not as hardline intolerant of Nazi talking points. And like, it, you know, you brought up a good point, Tyler, too. You know, there was there was edgy. Nobody knew that edgy was a fucking like, you know was like a fucking neo-Nazi, but he was because they are very clever in, in how they, they cloak and hide it. Um, so the, I, I think it wouldn't necessarily have to be as strong of a response as there's some Nazis, let's fuck them up, uh, if they weren't getting so good at convincing people, well, we're not actually not Actually, Antifa are the real Nazi. Like, that's, that's the kind of shit. It's all fucking propaganda, man. Okay, Ernest can talk right now. Yeah, no, I um, I, I just want to kind of say, like, so would you say that a like a hardline communist is is just as bad as a as a fascist? Like, just just a question. Uh, no, I've met plenty of communists and most of the time they're like a bunch of fucking nerds with a goddamn uh, acoustic guitar in the fucking janitor's closet at a community college and shit. Now, are their ideas uh, repulsive and repellent? Most of the time, yeah, but I think also if you're if you're looking at like the the there are some people who can ag advocate for it and they have it in a way in which I might think that they're very naive. I don't think that they're inherently like bad people. Like it, one of the reasons why you have to understand there's a very very clear delineation why fascism is worse than communism. Communism does not require the purposeful and violent suppression of other people. It doesn't require it. It often has happened that way. Yeah, which is why it isn't a good idea. But it doesn't require it. Fascism does. It absolutely requires it. It's, it's in the ideology. And I think that's a really clear delineation that a lot more people need to, need, need to, need to like, accept and, and acknowledge. Can, can I elaborate on what you said? Um, sure. Because that's a good point. Um, something I want to bring up, the difference between communism and fascism, communism is mostly an economic ideology. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of social qualities to it as well, um, yeah. but it, it's mostly uh, about how the, how people believe the economy should be run. If you point to stuff like uh, the Soviet Union, for example, their economy, uh, you know, you could argue it was it was communist based. But all like the negative uh, stuff that happened in the Soviet Union is not inherently like a part of communism. That was just a part of the leaders that were in control at that time that happened to follow a communist policy in regards to how they wanted to run uh, their economy. Um, and, you know, so with fascism, fascism involves a lot more social qualities like fascism is not solely economic. 
fascism also like uh fascism directly calls for like the like suppression of like opposing opinions in like the name of the state and like fascism like justifies like treating people as if they're subhuman based on like a false sense of nationalism um and you know there's there's a, a, a fundamental difference between these two things is anybody who is anybody saying like the soviet union is good or anything no obviously not um but communism inherently is not anywhere uh, on the same plane as fascism i completely disagree on that i don't believe that um communism is merely an economic idea you see it's it's a very intrusive ideology and indeed it is also inherently violent because it does pit one group against the other same as 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 fascism uh seize the means of production for example so you're going to take things ostensibly by force you know most people aren't going to let you just walk in and take over their factory that's not what you that know, means. I, yeah, that's that's not that's not what it means. Also, it you're, can you're, mean you have that. To, you, you under you have to understand like what you're talking about is is embracing communism from capitalism. In which case, I uh, yeah, it's not even necessarily that it would have to be like in a violent way. Uh, it, it, it can be like through societal change, et cetera, et cetera. But like again, I'm not a fan of communism, so. I'm not necessarily wanting to defend communism in this either, but yeah, and I'm not going to. That's where we disagree. Either. Like, I'm not going to defend fascism either. Like, my my grandfather spent five years on a boat because of Hitler. So you know, like, fuck the Nazis is, is kind of a family creed. Of um, course, real, yeah. real Nazis, real Nazis, mind you. And listen, I'm I'm probably the last person that these kind of white nationalist weirdos would would actually like. You know, I'm I'm um, like indigenous descent and, and stuff like that. So. Um, amongst other things. So I, I listen to salsa. That's probably enough to get me shot by by some of these people. But um, <laughs> but like the, the 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 problem here though is that by kind of letting by kind of like pushing them into the shadows by pushing them uh, like kind of trying to shut them up, we we really kind of give them a little bit of strength in, in a way because it, it points and says, well, look, listen they're scared of our ideas you know they're they're terrified of them so much that they they know that that we must be somewhat right we're justified in in in, in, in our beliefs so we if we you know we can use this to recruit and like honestly most people i know are not stupid enough to to really believe that oh if we just get rid of x group of people like 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 not just like um like uh, deport them or something like that but like kill them it's going to things are going to be better i i legitimately have never really heard people people say that. Um, it's now is it possible? Sure. And, and can we use? Yes, but we also have to remember that back in the '30s um, and and before that, a- anti-Semitism was kind of a uh, a, a thing. It was rather normal. Um, it, it was disgusting. It was really disgusting. But it it was not uncommon. I mean, there were po- there were like pogroms and everything like that. It was it was it was pretty messed up. I mean, like even in England in the like one thousand like the early um, medieval era. I mean, they were like throwing out Jews and sending them to France. Or, I'm of I'm of Jewish descent. Um, some of my family like was killed in the Holocaust. Um, but anti-Semitism has always been around, just like most forms of uh, bigotry have been around for a while. Um, but for the, the level that it was done in Nazi Germany on like that much of a, st- of a systemic level that involved like actual, like the final solution involving like all of these people need to be rounded up and killed. It, it was never, you know, maybe on individual basis and like pogroms and stuff, but it was never done to that extent on a systemic basis. And if you went to Germany in the 19 or if you went to pre-World War One Germany, for example, and told people, oh, this is what's going to happen with Germany in the future. Most Germans probably wouldn't believe you because at that time, most Germans could probably never see themselves committing a systemic genocide against the Jews. Because at that time, you know, Jews were their neighbors uh, working no, in the shops right. they frequented. Yeah. So it um, never underestimate the ideology people will take when they're under situations of desperation. And I believe that if this country went into a giant economic um, like crisis, uh, I believe a lot a lot of people in this country would take some pretty uh, extreme ideologies, including fascism. Germany. Well, it, yes. 
It, it doesn't. It doesn't really even have to be like an extreme economic situation. I mean, let let us look at at China right now. I mean, there is literally a genocide going on. And what are we doing? We're all sending people to the Olympics, and we're clapping and cheering, and everything's great. We're not really bothered with it. We're so, boycotting you know, the Olympics. Boycotting my foot. Like, listen, man. We're not like, sending on. our diplomats. I mean, oh, I, I big, agree we should be like, doing more, but uh, we we literally are no, like we we're still not sense. That... Sorry, continue. Uh, sorry, like it, it, it's passive aggressive. It's like, oh, no, we're just not going to send like the these bunch of political parasites who will come over there on taxpayer dollars and, 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 and hobnob. Oh, dear, that's that's not China doesn't really care about that part. China cares that people are there participating. This is this is like the thing. They see the athletes. They like that. They love this so much because, you know, the athletes are still there so the games can continue. China looks good, everything, everyone wins, and we all sit down and we shut up about what's happening in Xinjiang and Tibet and, and with the Falun Gong and things like that. We like, agree. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't think anybody here is going to be defending China, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but like, I, I think I think Aiden is 100% correct, though, is, you know, there's this, I, this cartoon character that we've built up over what we think, you know, Nazis are and and it, it, it's not fucking accurate. Like, there are more extremist groups in the United States, and their numbers are vastly higher than they've ever been. All it takes is the right kind of manipulation. It takes the right kind of uh, spokesperson and the right kind of stressors, usually economic stressors. And the next thing you know, you've got their numbers swelling up and growing. It's dangerous. Even the best people that hold the best moral values under situations of desperation can do things that uh, can do things that are unimaginable. And that was the situation with a lot of the, a lot of the people in Germany at the time, these people were in such economic desperation and they needed someone to look to. And, you know, here's this, here's this charismatic speaker, Hitler. And he was, he was easy to follow uh, for, for, for the Germans at the time. You know, all this talk about the Nazis and the Germans, like, um, do you guys think that, when we were under Donald Trump, it was the exact sort of thing. Is that what you mean? Like, more or less, like, you guys were comparing, like, what was happening with, like, the Jews and the anti-Semitism and the racism. And so, I'm just kind of curious. Do you guys actually think that Donald Trump was a fascist? Yes. Yeah. I think, I think Donald Trump was a fascist uh, for multiple reasons. Um, he fit in regards to the sense of national pride and this like overwhelming sense of nationalism to the point where it influences your policies. I think that's a big qualifier for fascism. Um, the uh, the taking a group of people and turning them into a scapegoat, for example, the Mexicans um, taking this group of people and, and trying to blame them for this large portion of crime when in reality, most crime, a majority of crime that's committed in this country uh, is mostly done by people that are, that live here. You're not getting criminals coming in from the outside. A lot of the criminals, and most of them, already live here. Um, so he took this group of people and turned them into scapegoats to the point where he justified policies like building a wall uh, with the taxpayer money. It's just this incredible sense of national pride um, and discrimination against people that okay. I think is okay. two of the okay. biggest so, red flags. Okay, so first it's going to be Ernest, and then it's going to be Snake to respond. And I guess Aiden after those two. So go ahead, Ernest. Yeah, no, like, um, for, first of all, if we're going to talk about, um, you know, national, like, pride and, and kind of directing policy, um, most of South America is probably, you know, jackbooting their way to, to fascism. Um, so that, 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 that's one, that's um, one kind of thing there. And, and the second, like, Illegal immigration and, and the way that the border, the unsecure uh, nature of the border. Um, well, well, the border well, is just kind of a. If, if you really, if you really want to look at it, the border's kind of just people are people are going to get in. People are people can get in whether whether we want them to or not. I mean, the wall was supposed to, yes. supposed to like keep them out, quote unquote. But I mean. Look how much good that's done in the recent ones. I mean, that that's yeah. just from an outsider perspective. That's just yeah. Crazy. Well, well, well. Yes, but I mean, at the same time, at least measures have to be to be taken. Oh yeah. Because I mean, if yeah, like, like I'm, I'm not saying like I'm not saying all like migrants are bad. Like yeah, no, not at all. Not and you at come all. in, 
if you come into the country and you follow the rules, awesome. Yeah, you know what? do it legally. I, I, I but, if it. You're, I, but if you're here to, to do it illegally and you're doing things that are just going to get it just it looks poorly for us, you know what I mean? It, it, it does, but if I can kind of just finish my, my oh, yeah, point yeah, I'm so sorry, I'm mind. so sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Um, no, but like, like if we, if you look at it, if you want to really kind of take the wind out of these kind of far right sails, then the thing you're going to want to do is kind of make some moves to kind of um, slow down the illegal immigration. You know, you're going to want to to make sure oh. that these these groups are. But hey, listen, I'm not saying throw them in camps and, and all that nonsense. You know, that's that's the complete opposite of, of what I'm trying to say here. But what I'm saying is that you crack down on the people that enable it to thrive. You crack down on the businesses that that make their money. But on is, it. Isn't that's kind of like that. That's 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 kind of catering to their their fear mongering. And like I'm very look, I I'm very very familiar with uh, far right groups. Like uh, unfortunately, very very familiar. If you seal the border up, it it will only embolden them. Like there there's no way that's going to help them at all. Like and, and the thing is too, one of the things you have to be very very careful of, especially when you start talking about uh, this idea of nationalism, is there is a purposeful and overt push these days to conflate the word patriot with nationalism. A nationalist is not a fucking patriot. That's not what that means. Nationalism has a very, very specific, specific definition, and it is it is wildly different than patriotism, And but that's getting watered down. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I, I don't think that that's necessarily like a, like a bad thing, but I don't think it would help. I think it would actually maybe do the opposite. That that's 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 my perspective. Well, well, t- to an extent, um, I, I see what you're trying to say. By by the way, Jeff, I I gotta just really before I head out, uh, I gotta kind of apologize for being a bit of an ass. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, an ass too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, hey, at least I can I can get that out of my system. But um, the the thing here though is like I the reason I speak on on immigration like this is that like I've I've spent a lot of time in in Peru and Peru has a a major uh, problem with um, illegal Venezuelan migration, and it, it, it's bad. So I, I see the the when I was down there uh, like a couple of years ago because of COVID, um, I've seen the kind of problems that it caused and the tension, and that actually gave a lot more um, kind of um, I guess authority uh, or or um, what's, what's the word I'm trying to find here. Um, it gave them a lot more influence. These these kind of far right and even even far left kind of anti uh, immigration kind of groups, um, and 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 it got bad. Like like I've I knew people who wanted the police to go down there and trunch in the living crap out of these people for for what for 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 fleeing a, a really shitty country and 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 having to 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 work on the streets you know selling candies and crap you know they these people were were overjoyed and these were just um like normal people and it it was it was scary and and but if the government had done more to kind of make sure that the migration situation was kind of controlled it would have taken away a lot of the talking points and would have given the the right in peru the far right a lot less strength um, you know, it, you might you might be onto something to some degree there, especially when it comes to things like Venezuela or things that are not necessarily like in the United States. The I, I can tell you right now, the main talking points with the American far right right now has absolutely nothing to do with immigration. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. They'll talk about it uh, in a way to like if somebody if there's like a casual, you know, average everyday Joe uh, who has some reason, whether it's valid or not, I don't really give a shit about quantifying that uh to to be concerned about immigration they will utilize that to glom onto them and to find a way to then further like push a different kind of uh well if you if we, we agree with your brother but also consider this and it's uh, you know it's i know I, i'm starting to sound like the uh you know all right pipeline sort of thing but it's honestly not like not not a thing it's it's actually like it's very much a thing um, you know, so it's, 
I, I, the American alt right or neo Nazis, nationalist movements, they don't, they don't give a shit about. Uh, it's all it, that's just buzzword shit to try and appeal to a broader base. No, I, 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 I can understand. Like, like for the what's really fucking crazy about it too. One of the one of the best tactics that they've done lately, and it's incredibly effective, is uh, they they recruit specifically non-white people. I mean, like look at Enrique Tario. You know, fucking uh, leader of the Proud Boys, uh, fucking stool pigeon motherfucker. Uh, you know, well, how could they be? How could they have any kind of suspicious racist mentalities when when their leader is, is you know, he's Hispanic? Like, what, what the fuck? And it's just, it's a fucking smokescreen. It always is. And these people aren't stupid. That's the thing. Like, it, we we are more comfortable thinking along the lines that you know these these far-right nationalist groups are stupid and probably the majority of them uh that are just like the followers and whatnot are very stupid they're very very stupid um but the people that are in charge of it are not they are very purposeful very smart they know exactly what the fuck they're doing and and you know what i i I agree with you there um that but i i actually think that they are all kind of like i'll agree we actually want the leadership is is very clever of these groups and um one one thing i've learned as a kind of a student of history and and economics um is that a lot of these a lot the best kind of recruiting tool for these groups almost almost any kind of violent um kind of militant organizations is 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 economic reasons i mean a lot of these these people at least the followers of them they're they're not well to do kind of people you know they're 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 poor they're they're disenfranchised they might have had some kind of incident in their lives that have um, made it difficult for them to to find uh, to find work and or or friendship or or community or anything like that you know so so they end up getting a hold of these groups and i mean it, it it's like a cult i mean you know they they kind of give them a bit of yep. love give them a bit of attention um and 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 it goes from there so i mean really um there's a really good book on on something similar to this it's called um the the other path by uh, hernando de soto it's uh, it's an econo- it's about economics and what it what it says is that we can counteract um kind of terrorism and 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 these kind of violent um kind of ideologies through economic reform because if people are making money if people are are, are more successful in their life they're less likely to kind of look to these groups for for answers and and for a future. And I I say that uh, for the far left and for the far right. And and De Soto was very effective in um, dealing with the uh, the Shining Path in Peru in the in the late mid eighties, early nineties. Yeah, uh, a lot of yeah. Them, yeah. So I mean that his his policies were were highly responsible for that, and they were very effective because they tried to kill him about six times. Um, luckily, did did not really do a very good job at it um you know but like that that's something that we can we can really kind of talk about as as well like how like if, instead of just like taking these people and and kind of pushing them further underground let's look at the kind of social economic problems that lead to them being um into these groups and 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 trying to address them because if we do that in the long run we're a lot better off hmm I'd say maybe I, you know, the a lot of this too uh, comes down to uh, it, it, it's. I, I think that you have a point, um, but to the extent of it, I don't necessarily agree. I, I think that one of the things you have to keep in mind too is a lot of these positions, a lot of these uh, these like far right positions are adopted from a starting point of one that was already present. And those are usually informed or taught by, uh, I mean, you know, their families, you know, you, your, your dad was like an overt fucking racist. And like, if you're never really given a whole lot of reason to, to question that sort of thing, you might also do the same, you know, you might start to, uh, to try and find some means to, to blame either your economic situation or because, you know, that one blue haired chick in school fucking made fun of me or like fucking any number of different things, you know, it, it's these things compound on top of each other and there's no real clear. And this, this is probably one of the hardest things to deal with. There's no clear delineation of when you have arrived at far right. 
And in fact, there's lots of people, and I've known lots of people who are in fact quite socially progressive, who also, in some bizarro twist, end up believing some incredibly far right ideals and have some absolutely disgusting positions. You know, I, I know plenty of people who are like, nah, I love black people. I, I, I love Hispanic people. Uh, I just hate the Jews or I hate gays or, you know, fucking whatever. So where do you draw the line of like, okay, now this is officially the line where you are far right. You know, where, how do you draw that line? And once you understand enough about that person or at least that group, if you can lump them enough into a group, uh, how you can then further address and combat that idea. Hmm. It's, I mean, it's a tough thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying I have all the answers or anything, you know, oh, but like no, no. one of the, one of the things that caused like a huge rift between me and some people is I previously fully bought into the idea that far right, like not even like just neo-Nazis, but like far right fucking people were an actual problem. I was like, ah, there can't be that many. And then they came to my fucking house and I was like, okay, maybe I need to reevaluate my fucking position on this shit. Okay. Wow. Okay. When did they come to your house? Uh, that was, so you remember the whole, uh, the whole fucking blood sports drama shit that happened with me? Yes, I remember that. Yeah, that's when. Yeah. Was that the, the Tonka Soft thing? Uh, it was like the Tonka saw the Discord thing. The I mean, it was oh, like a whole big yeah, that that. Okay, now now I now I kind of remember all that. Yeah, that was that was a <laughs> yeah, yeah. weird and messed up time. Uh, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry that that happened to you, man. Like like legitimately. Um, I I really don't like the change my position. That, yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I, I, I can I can understand. I can understand. And um, you know, I've um. You know, T Tyler can probably tell you I've uh, I've done some kind of things that I, I'm surprised I haven't ended up like locked away in a Venezuelan prison. Um, like, Don't do that. Even... Oh, trust me, man. I, I've 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 done some protesting in that, and I've got I got I pissed <laughs> people off overseas, man. But uh, I'm probably not allowed in China, Cuba, and Venezuela. Let's but just let's just say that probably not places I'm really happy to go to anyway. But still. Um, but but like I, I see what you mean, and you know what needs to be done is is a real serious kind of look into these kind of groups and seeing like what is um, the things that kind of attract them, and and how what reforms can can we add on a you know kind of personal on a and on a government level kind of make to to kind of give them less power. And, and honestly, I want, I honestly, I'm not just going to say that just for the far right. I'm going to say that for the far left too, because either one does not usually end very well. Um, you know, so, you know, for me, it, it's about finding that kind of happy medium and making sure that, you know, people are, have at least freedom of speech. Um, they're productive. They can, they can, you know, live life, pursuit, uh, pursuit of happiness and, and, and things like that. Um, and we, we really need to, to get to the bottom of this because the polarization in society is getting to the point now where it, it is starting to, it is scary. Um, and, and the economic situation in, in country, in, in both Canada and the U S and pretty much everywhere else is, 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 is exacerbating it. It's making it a lot worse. Like it's, it's even up where I'm to, like, you think Canada's pretty, you know, chill and peaceful. Not, not around here. People are getting mad. Like, oh, I mean, Canada, Canada has been having some real fucking problems for a while. A uh, this government, tell you the truth. Like a, a lot of it, weirdly enough, is, is like, it's like the government. Um, they're, they're making mistakes. They're, they're doing like really bad economic policy. And, and it shows like, like right now, for example, gas where I live is like $1 and 70 cents Canadian a liter. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's expensive and people are, are angry. And so they went to the government and said, Hey guys, do you, do you mind like kind of considering dropping the, the taxes on, on fuel? And the government's just like, yeah, we understand your pain, but no, uh, have a nice day. Uh, don't forget to vote liberal next, uh, next election and, yeah. and off, off they, off they go. And, and there's, and people are mad. So they're looking for solutions and there's, there's people who are, uh, right wing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm ostensibly, right 
but I'm not like a far right guy. Like I, I'm not going to like march on the Capitol or any of that weird crap. You know, I, I, me, it, it's mostly I'm, I'm, I'm socially kind of liberal, um, economically, fiscally, I'm, I'm a conservative. That's, that's the best way. Yeah, more or less, what happened at the Capitol was just absolutely terrible because. Yeah, that was that was a <laughs> show. Yeah, um, but, but like these problems, like, and a lot of it is, is to an extent, is, is government, and some of it is media. Uh, they exacerbate it, and, and they give fuel to the fire. And, and they, they make people seek out answers where otherwise you would you, you probably wouldn't be seeking them. Yeah, the thing about what happened at the Capitol, more or less, I don't think just because, of course, people just disagree with the results gives them permission to just storm into the Capitol and just do whatever they want to. And yeah, no, so no, absolutely not. it's like so weird to me, like little by little is like when I look at the news about what's happening in this country is like little by little is like coming apart. It feels that way sometimes, doesn't it? You know, it was, it's funny, like, just yesterday, uh, I was watching uh, the Timba on Toast, uh, Timba on Toast, a new video about Tim Pool, and he made a video predicting January 6th, but he said it was going to be the fucking liberals that were going to do it, and I fucking lost my mind. I laughed so fucking hard, dude. It was crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what you really think about it. Tell you the truth. Uh, I, I think it was more a or less. Show. Uh, more or less, I don't really watch Tim Pole because it seems as though when I watch his video, he tends to exaggerate like a lot of details. So, yeah, Plus, Tim's, like, Tim, Tim's a fucking disinformation agent. I well, he's, he's, he doesn't believe a fucking word exactly. that he says uh, like, when he tries to be centrist or like even killed about it. He doesn't fucking believe a word of it. It's all fucking bullshit. Well, I've, 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 I've met Tim. I've talked to Tim in real life like four or five times now. The dude is totally and utterly 100% full of shit. The only person I've met uh, from the internet who was more full of shit than Tim Pool was Andy No. Like, that. that's that's a fucking lion dick bag right there. Holy shit. That dude is so fucking fake. But, like, these people, these people do more to help fucking far-right ideology than some fucking squawking neo-Nazi. You know, like it, it's it's absolutely fucking insane. And that's the danger that we face right now. It's not that like necessarily, you know, holy shit, we got to watch out for the fucking brown shirts or something. We have to watch out for people watering everything down so that the that, you know, like when somebody says some really egregious shit like both Tim and Andy have, people don't call them on it for what it is because they're softening the line between actual like overt extremist ideas and well that's just like what being right wing is and nobody should be more mad about that than people on the right like if i was on the right and that shit was happening i'd be fucking pissed i'd be furious no i i i despise all the kind of misinformation and and i agree like like people who kind of hype things up and kind of push them towards kind of that that tipping point are are, are problematic it it, it it's really a lot of the really big media names. It's not just, you know, like Tim Pool and, and, and Andy No and, and, and groups like that. I mean, it's, you, you can say it's, um, it's CNN, it, it's NBC, you know, like they all have an interest in kind of making drama and making problems because, I mean, it sells. You know, drama, sure. drama makes money. Like, like that's why you're not really going to hear anything about what's going on with, with China because, I mean, that, that's kind of boring. It's not exciting. We don't, we don't see it on the ground. Things aren't on fire. Uh, let's, let's just forget it. Um, but you know, if, if there is a, a bunch of dudes with like tiki torches and, and like weird haircuts, oh man, we got to go down there. We've got to, we've got to hype it up and maybe then we'll bring in the other groups who are opposed to them. They'll fight it out. We'll be able, we'll be there to record it. We can get the views. We can get the, the clicks. And, and that's, that's awesome for us. You know, this, this discord, this, this chaos is, is profitable. And, and, you know, they, they just, they just throw the fuel on the fire. They all know they're doing it, but you know, they're making, they're making a buck. And that's, that's, that's another big problem here. Sure. I, I mean, like, you know, they, they, that's a, that's been a problem with, uh, with news for, uh, I don't know, forever. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta, I gotta run though. I'm sorry. Uh, nice, uh, nice being able to talk to you though. And having a, 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 a good conversation. Uh, yeah. Thanks for, man. thanks for stopping by. No problem. Have a good day. Okay, and also, Snake, if you want to talk to, you can talk if you want to. 
Yeah, I was just gonna originally say like I believe Aiden was kind of <laughs> Aiden was right. As much as I would like to think that the border wall is somewhat okay. I mean, just looking at it, I, I try to I try to look at it from a sensible point of view. Like, oh, is this okay for the economy? Or oh, is this okay for like ethics? Oh, is this okay? Looking at it just doesn't really track. I mean, like when when it was first being made, I was really young. And, and keep in mind, when you're really young, you're very stupid. I oh, yeah. genuinely didn't know. Because I, I, I was born in America, of course. I genuinely thought I was going to be deported because I am Mexican. And I was just sitting there like, oh, shit. I, I was... And when, I, when it clicked in my head, I'm like, oh, I was born in America. I'm fine. I just really <laughs> felt stupid. Yeah. 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 I understand. I understand. But um, as far as, like, the misinformation stuff, I agree that sometimes YouTuber... And I'm even guilty of this sometimes myself do you know tend to exaggerate or you know just spread misinformation but as far as the whole entire controversy with joe rogan and i guess what's going on with the vaccines and whatnot do you yeah i'm trying to yeah no no i'm I'm, I'm talking to jeff right now do you okay do you think that they should be allowed a platform jeff uh so that's you know i'm not going to give you a very satisfactory answer i'm not sure um, I, the, so it comes down to the same problem I have with, uh, when we're talking about platforming, like really extremist ideas as well, you know, you can't illegalize being an asshole. You can't illegalize somebody being wrong, you know, uh, and Joe Rogan is wrong. He's wrong. He's 100% fucking wrong. And, uh, I, it pisses me off because I'm a Joe Rogan fan. You know, I like Joe. I, I think he's fucking great, except this shit and it really bugs me so my ideal situation is one where joe rogan has a revelation of oh wow i fucked up shows humility well it doesn't even have to show humility i don't give a fuck if he apologizes or not just stops doing it that's what i would like um so as far as like you know if if spotify for some reason was pressured into because of their bottom line uh being hurt that they decide to censor joe rogan well, that's that's the free market. That's capitalism at fucking work. So that would be their decision. Um, but as far as like government censorship, absolutely not. Under no fucking circumstance. Yeah, because no I remember. Way. Yeah, more or less, I remember seeing the video clip of the press secretary saying that they should shut down the podcast because of the misinformation. I'm like, no, you should not do that. That's their free speech. Can I? All right, because the way they can go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, because the way I see free speech as the misinformation should be called out by, like, people around it saying, hey, this isn't right, this is shitty. I just feel like it should be regulated by people around them, not just by, like, oh, this person said something uh, wrong and completely, completely stupid. We need to ban them immediately. That's not how I think it should work. I think it should just work as everyone else around them call them out and say, hey, this is a shitty-ass opinion and this is not right. I feel like that's just how it should work. Yeah, it's the same That's... thing what happened with, like, Whoopi Gober and her comments about, like, what happened in the Holocaust, because that was, like, stupid, too, but I don't think, you know, just because of her stupid opinion, she should, you know, be, like, suspended for two weeks or something. To well, just... I mean, it's just, it, you know, it's, it's, again, like, it's one of those things where I I really disagree with Whoopi, and, and well, I mean, she knows, she's she's pretty much walked it back and be like, yeah, that was that was not right, that wasn't, that wasn't correct. Um, but, I mean, if The View chooses to do that, then you know, we all operate under the, the proviso of capitalism. We can't just be like, well, we like capitalism until it makes the, the company makes it that we dislike, in which case the only thing we can do is respond with capitalism by saying, well, then fuck that company. I'm not going to support the company. You know, like, yeah. It's, yeah, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I agree. You know, I personally would would rather be like, uh, hey, Whoopi, that was bad. You should probably elaborate. Just let everybody know what the fuck is actually going on. And we'll just that and move on and yeah on. i think the same wasn't alex jones like accused of the same shit or is that like a different story because he like said oh, some no, really alex, cool. alex jones alex jones uh has done some incredibly egregious shit uh yeah i heard he was an extremist that's what i just heard uh, oh yeah more or less, he, he more or less denied like what happened at sandy hook among many things. Oh shit! And, right. and after after it was known and it came out and he knew 
that some of his viewers mm-hmm. were literally harassing the families of some of the kids that died there. He didn't um, care, and he kept doing it. All right, I gotta go, but from uh, from what I know, he just sounds like a dead card. Uh, I d- at the end oh, of the yeah. day, people just need to call out things. We don't need to go on banning on a banning spree. We just need to call out shit. Sure. All right. Have a good. Right. Have a good space. Have a good one. Sorry for cutting you off. I just need to go real quick. Sorry, guys. Have a good day. All right. Take care, Nick. But yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not a member of. I'm not like an actual member of Antifa, by the way. So I just. I dude. I like. I love the. I love. I. I so I guess one thing that might be a really good delineation is like I'm friends with plenty of people who are actually like members of Antifa groups and shit, but like these are not people that are running around trying to do street combat either. They're more like activist people and, and they do like activist stuff that doesn't involve violence. And so like I even when it comes to people who are engaged in actual groups under the proviso of Antifa, I can't throw them under the bus either. It's just it just depends. It depends on like, I guess I'd just rather, I'd rather, I'd rather judge people as people and on their individual behaviors. If there's a specific group that you point to that's doing something very bad, then yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I don't have any problem being like that, bad behavior. That wasn't good. I don't agree with that, you know? Yeah, more or less, I tend to agree in the sense that people should be judged individually because I noticed that at least a few years ago, maybe like a year ago, that there was some sort of push to call Antifa a terrorist organization. But like you said earlier, they're decentralized, they're not organized. And so it's kind of hard to just lump anything that's like Antifa as a terrorist organization. And so when it comes down to punishments for crimes for people, I think that they should be judged individually based upon what an individual person has done rather than to just group everybody as just potential terrorists just because they are lumped as quote unquote antifa. Sure, sure. I mean there's there are some like very very niche examples of extremist groups that I think you can very comfortably say can be condemned uh because they overtly and explicitly state their intentions and their, you know, dangerous, violent, uh you know, like these are things that I think are you can pretty confidently get into like the uh like the fucking oath keepers the, or the patriot front like they have some pretty explicit and i'd say downright anti-american ideals and so like i can condemn them but i'm still not going to take away their ability to fucking talk i'm just going to openly be like fuck those fucking people fuck you blah 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 you know whatever and that's fine that's that's just me exercising my speech exactly i tend to agree with you because again i guess when it comes down to it you just need to judge people by their individual action, not just, you know, lump people together. But by the way, I apologize, you know, for going back and forth on Twitter. I guess maybe it's one of those days where it's like, you know, I felt frustrated. No, it's fine, man. I mean, like, I don't take any... Dude, after all the shit that's gone on on the fucking internet, after all of these fucking years, I don't take anything personal anymore. I just... It's... it's whatever. It's all shit posting and memes. Uh, and if it gets any more serious than that, it's it, it's time to log off. <laughs> oh, yeah but dude patriot front or not patriot front ah jesus christ that's wrong that's a flub up uh iron front I, I i will always rock the fucking iron front uh all day every day i i fucking i love the i love the iconography i like what it stands for i'm i'm down with that and besides dude i trigger so many fucking weirdo snowflake dudes who are freaked out because i'm I'm like, you know, uh oh, it's the leader of Antifa, here he comes. And I start telling people I'm gonna force feminize them and turn them into brood mares for my super soldiers and shit. It's fun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's fun. But I can't I cannot really do that on Twitter it's like I cannot do that on Twitter because when I just tweet in Twitter, I just tend to be very serious, you know, not necessarily like shit posting. Like I cannot do that at all. Because it's like sometimes when you read the tweets, it's like it's really hard to know the intentions of somebody. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I know, and I, I kind of take advantage of that sometimes by by fucking with people a bit. I'll, I'll admit that that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, no, I think I think it's fine. I think we have a better understanding now, and I, I think it's. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad too. But anyway, I have to go because it's lunchtime. But uh, take care, man. Hope you have a good day. Yeah.
It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. 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 It's everyone's friend.